United Nations tweets support for Antifa. Yes, that's right, Antifa that's looting, burning, and taking over American cities. Insurrections, real time, right now, and the UN supports it. And then after a backlash, they quickly delete it. So let's take a look at this here. We see at 231, June 20th, the UN, UN slash, hash, UN hashtag human rights experts express profound concern over a recent statement by the U.S. Attorney General describing Antifa and other anti-fascist activities as domestic terrorists, saying it undermines the rights to freedom of expression and the peaceful assembly in the country. Of course, that went out. We could see that what Antifa is doing is anything but peaceful, particularly here in Seattle. And so they've deleted it, which is interesting. These human rights experts come out and say, this is a terrible thing. And then, oop, no, never mind. We take it back. These are the experts. These are the globalist experts. So, and we've seen President Trump wants to label them a terrorist organization after the protests, which included rioting, looting, and large-scale vandalism. On May 31st, he declared this on Twitter in a follow-up to uh, Attorney General William Barr's statement at the time, which was where he said, quote, The violence instigated and carried out by Antifa and other similar groups in connection with the rioting is domestic terrorism and will be treated accordingly. And (laughs) uh, to the surprise of many, the United Nations has now issued a statement rebuking the White House attempt to impose the legal designation. Uh, Counterterrorism expert Max Abrams first thought it was a joke, but no, this is not the onion. This was actually tweeted out by human rights experts, the UN. And, of course, they cited their unnamed experts. Wouldn't want to do that. So this comes over. There's a debate who or just what Antifa is. They have a lot of big money backers. It gets washed, apparently, through Soros. But the new UN statement appears to positively be supportive, giving it clearly asserts that Antifa is composed of mere anti-fascist activists. And here you can see this woman, Paula Andra Eigner, tweets out, Why is Antifa waving the UN flag? Well, because they're trying to set up a North American League. They are actively attempting to overthrow the U.S. government and install a new form of government where you will be ruled over by bureaucrats on distant shores unelected and unaccountable, and they think that this revolution they're staging, they think it's time, they think they can pull it off now, and these people think they're going to be rewarded. Now, you can see how revolutionaries are rewarded by the government when their revolution is successful. I think they may want to reconsider which flag they're waving. The unusual UN tweet and statement was widely mocked via conservative social media. Jack Posobiec tweeted, The United Nations is running cover for an international extremist group that has conducted violent insurrectionist attacks across North America and Europe. The question is, why? Why would they support this? Ian Miles Chong tweets, United Nation comes out in support of Antifa. Of course they support it. It's just a precursor to UN peacekeepers on American soil to serve as international police. It's the end of American sovereignty. Now people are beginning to call for defunding the UN. More importantly, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo took the UN Human Rights Council to task, slamming the bodies hypocrisy in lecturing Washington on race issues while being a haven for dictators and democracies that indulge them. Here you can see his tweet. The UN debate on policing and race in the U.S. marks a new low for that body. 
Our vigorous ongoing civic discourse is a sign of our democracy's strength and maturity. I wish it were a little more mature and less juvenile, but we were right to leave this joke of a human rights forum comprised of Venezuela and recently Cuba and China. (laughs) Yeah, do you think these countries have our best interests at heart? You think China has our best interests at heart? You, You know, we saw the WHO running interference, World Health Organization running interference for China. And you remember when Trump came out and said that that he was taking this hydroxychloroquine, that it had at least the possibility to help people. And there was all these studies that came out very, very fast. And they said, no, this doesn't work. It's, It's just, it makes no difference or it's even dangerous. Well, turns out these researchers have retracted this study. An influential study which found anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine raised the risk of cardiac issues has been retracted by its three authors. The study published May 22nd in the UK's prestigious Lancet Medical Journal, okay, published, peer-reviewed medical journal, relied on bogus data, which could not transfer the full data set for an independent review and could not vouch for the veracity of the primary data sources. Yeah, we concluded this, but they say, just don't, we can't show you our numbers. We can't show you how we got this. Uh, Let's see. Here you can see the World Health Organization actually halted trials of the drug only to reverse course after the Lancet issued its disclaimer regarding the study. So the UN and the World Health Organization. What do you think the odds are that the IPCC is telling the truth on global warming? You know, the solution to every environmental problem is what? Centralizing the means of production in the hands of an unaccountable few. Hmm, what is the UN doing? Praising the overthrow of the U.S. government to centralize power in the hands of an unelected bureaucracy in the hands of a few. What's the UN small arms treaty about? taking guns out of the hands of civilian populations. Okay, doing away with the Second Amendment. Let's see, tech censorship. What's big tech doing right now? It's taking away the rights of free speech across the country. Do you really think by aiding and abetting these revolutionaries, do you really think that by supporting a government that's establishing itself through covert means, do you think we're going to get more freedom? More liberty? More justice? Is it going to be the utopia? Is it going to be the better world? I doubt it. How many people died because of this fake study? Look at this. On the basis of the available mortality data, the members of the committee recommended that there are no reasons to modify the trial protocol. They just did it to get their false narrative. They just did it to get a bunch of articles, headline news, bashing Trump. Academia is corrupt. Scientific community is corrupt. The UN is corrupt. They're supporting revolutions real time in America, the establishment of autonomous zones. This is the study that was heavily relied upon by the left to mock President Trump for taking the drug. All your little late night hosts and Huffington Post and their little... Uh, they're little jokes, they're throwaway one-liners. So Sean Davis tweets, the entire study was fake. Congratulations on using garbage science from con artists to scare sick people away from potentially life-saving treatment. Hope the dank and anti-Trump burns were worth it. This is where you could see Trump on April 4th said, what do you have to lose? Take it. Oh, but they, they wanted... They wanted to make Orange Man look bad. We all entered this collaboration to contribute in good faith and at a time of great need during the COVID pandemic, said the authors. We deeply apologize to you, the editors, and the journal readership for any embarrassment or inconvenience this may have caused. Yeah, inconvenience like dying. Here you can see Joel B. Polak says, The Party of Science 
lied about science. They lied about science. Burks, Fauci, and the corrupt media who peddled this fake study from a washed-up sci-fi author and a cam girl owe the entire nation an apology. How many people died from lack of treatment because our nation's, quote, experts once again got duped by con artists. But people, people are getting wise to this. You can see this isn't Democrat versus Republican. This is a, this is a new type of conflict. This is actually an attempt to overthrow the United States. And, and it can get frustrating. It can feel like everyone's been corrupted. We've watched all these big corporations take the knee at a moment's notice, tearing down the statues of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. They're not doing this for the stated reasons. This is how they this is what they do to the statues of dictators when those dictators are finally overthrown. This, this is an overthrow. This is a coup attempt, and they think they have the power to do it. This is where Russia, Russia, Russia came from. This is the Ukraine hoax. It's nothing but a raw grab for power. But people are waking up, and people are pushing back. I think men like these are afraid of an uneducated, 125-pound punk like you that's never won a fair fight in your life and holds your gun sideways? <laughs> Young man, I'll meet you on solid ground anytime, anywhere, light or heavy. Makes no difference to me. You won't walk away. Look at you. Men like us, son, we do dumbbell presses with weights bigger than you. And the convicts in jail, most of those men are good people who just found themselves crossed with the law. They're not evil, and they don't respect you or any punk like you. They'll toss you around like a rag doll. I encourage every citizen watching this to look into your own heart and find the American courage that conquers all evil. I implore you to listen to this message and stand up. Take back your streets. Take back your country. Come forward with information about these heathens that have terrorized your community. And for those who would use this message as a way to create false racial division in our country, take a close look behind me. Standing next to every cop is a leader of our black community. This is not about race. It's about right versus wrong. One last message to the gremlins. You don't like the things I've told you tonight? I got one thing to say. I'm easy to find. On behalf of the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office, the Louisiana State Police, the U.S. Marshals, and every cop and law-abiding citizen from sea to shining sea, I'm Captain Clay Higgins, asking every patriot to stand up, share this video, and send a clear message to the world. We're Americans. We'd rather die on our feet than live on our knees. Well said. And I'll just add, the only way they win is if we stay asleep. <laughs>